This is the Caseras A6 4K Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector, and it could well be the best value one of these on the market at the moment. Let's take a closer look. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. So this projector is currently in Kickstarter and it's got various different price points that you can enter and I'll leave the link in the description for you. But like with many 4K laser cinema projectors, this comes in a compact short throw box that sits in front of the screen. And just for clarification, we do recommend this type of projector is used with an ALR screen. On the face of it, this looks pretty good. It's neat and tidy, and I think it's got a nice, simple and clean design to it. On the sides, there are the vents which keep this thing cool, and on top, it's very familiar with a lot of these ultra short throw laser projectors. On the back, you've got all of your usual ports, including two 4K at 60 Hertz, 2.0 HDMI ports. This is what comes in the box. I'm in the UK and I got a UK plug, and it comes with an attractive remote, which doesn't look too dissimilar from the A1 Vision remote I looked at a few weeks ago. You may have noticed a dongle with this package and I'll come on to that a little bit later. A comprehensive manual is also included. Right, let's turn this thing on. For the avoidance of any doubt, this does use the same pixel shifting technology which is familiar in a host of these type of projectors. If you wanted true 4K, well, then you're going to be paying a lot more than this. This does have 8-point keystone correction, so it's super simple to drag the image to fit your screen perfectly. And within a few seconds, you're then ready to watch all of your content. By the way guys, if you do see any screen flickering at all, that's due to the camera frequency and nothing to do with the projector. In reality, you don't see any of it. The operating system built into this projector is Android based. Now don't get confused with Android TV. It's not that, it doesn't have that type of interface. That's what the dongle which is provided is for so that you can install apps. You can install apps via file manager, but it's better just to use the dongle. I'm gonna be using my Apple TV as that is what I test all of the projectors on and so therefore I can keep it consistent. This has many different smart functions and many different picture modes. I found that the cinema mode was the best in most settings. However, I did go into user settings when I was playing games just so that I could turn off MEMC because that did slow down the latency. Speaking of latency, I've not actually got an actual measurement, but I've been told from the updates on their Kickstarter page that it's around 35 milliseconds, which is about the right average for this type of projector. As well as electronic keystone correction, this also has electronic focus. And I found that I was able to get a pin sharp image very simply. It looked good right even to the corners. Now this type of projector just sits a few inches away from the screen and the recommended screen sizes are between 80 and 120 inches, although you can push that to 150 inches. From around 4.3 inches away from the wall, you'll get an 80 inch screen. Up to 11 and a half inches away, you'll get the 120 inch. This projector has 2,200 ANSI lumens, which means it delivers a pretty good image even in full daylight. Now, it's obviously not quite as bright as the AWOL Vision projector we looked at a few weeks ago, but I do have to say, you've got to remember that that was two to $3,000 more expensive than this one. And as I drop the blind on the right hand side, you can see that the colors, the vibrancy are just getting better and better and better. And it really does start to pop. And this is still in daylight. You can still see some light coming through the edge. This is a comparison of day and night. Day obviously being on the right hand side. And as you can see, I don't think it does too bad. As with any projector, it's obviously going to look better the darker the room that you're in. Now, one thing that really impressed me straight away was the colors on this projector. This is the triple laser projector, and so therefore it does tend to deliver better accuracy when it comes to colors. And this has 107% of the BT2020 color gamut. On many projectors of this type, I tend to dial back the blues and dial back the reds, and I can see that it's sometimes a little bit too oversaturated. However, in cinema mode, I found that this was pretty natural and I didn't really change that much at all. It was really pretty good right out of the box, but you have got those changes and the settings menu there, so you can make changes if you so wish. The difference between contrast obviously is going to be more limited on this type of projector compared to a TV. There was just the occasional scene where it did seem that the picture was a slightly faded or a little bit washed out, but that was rare. And for the majority of the time in a darker environment, the contrast ratio, which is 1.5 million to one, did a pretty good job. 
The projector currently supports Dolby Atmos and HDR10, although there are plans to increase this to HDR10 Plus and also Dolby Vision, and that will be delivered via an over-the-air update. The picture quality in HDR mode, again, is great. Again, we did see some slightly elevated black levels, but nothing that you wouldn't expect on this type of projector. And for the majority of darker scenes, as these images show you, I think it looked pretty good. Those 3D fans out there will be pleased to know that a plan to upgrade to 3D is in the works and likely to be delivered around spring 2023. So that's something which both of you can look forward to. I'm only joking, guys. I've just never been a real big fan of 3D. So overall, I was pretty impressed with SDR content and HDR content on this projector, and it delivered a pretty good job, certainly comparable to like-for-like -like projectors at this 2200 ANSI lumens. Gaming on this type of projector really comes down to two factors. If you're looking for the fastest input lags possible, then this type of projector and any type of ultra short throw projector is not going to be right for you. You need to go for a dedicated gaming projector. However, if you're a little bit like me and just love the massive screen when playing the brand new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, well, then this is going to be a hit for you. I tested this projector with a wide range of games and had an absolute blast. It was great. It was immersive and having that huge screen delivering bright, vivid images, well, I thought it was brilliant. Definitely, yes, it's not the fastest. I think input lag in game mode is as low as 35 milliseconds. If you need faster than that, then as I said earlier, go for a dedicated gaming projector or just get an OLED. So there's a few other things that you need to know. The sound on this projector is pretty good. Yes, it does support Dolby Atmos, and that's great. It does have eARC support, which again has been an update that's been made in the last few weeks, and that is definitely what you'll need because I say it in all of my projector videos, don't rely on the sound. However good it is, don't rely on the sound coming out of the projector. If you're spending this type of money on a cinema setup, then what you want is a punchy sound. And as good as this projector is for sound, it just doesn't deliver what a 5.1 or a surround sound system can deliver. And even a dedicated higher end soundbar will give you much better sound than what this can. But I think that you all know that in a way, and if you're spending this type of money, you're going to have a sound system already, or you're certainly going to be looking at investing in that, and that is definitely the right thing to do. The other thing is screen. I said right at the beginning of this that an ALR screen is really the thing that gives this the punch. There is a package on their Kickstarter which does include an ALR screen, so that's something that you can consider also, but if you're in any doubt about doing this straight against the wall, yes, it will be fine, but it delivers probably 50% better quality if it's on an ALR screen, ambient light rejecting screen. The other thing that impressed me, speaking of sound, was the sound of the fans on this projector. Now, it's measured at around 28 decibels, which is around the same as most other of these type of projectors, but I barely heard it, and I was playing HDR movies, I had Maverick 4K Ultra HD playing through my PS5, and it never seemed to bother me. It was really quiet all of the time, so that's a great thing. So my friends, in summary, I think if you can pick this up in the Kickstarter mode at the moment, then this is an incredible price. It offers exceptional value, certainly better value than a lot of other projectors of this type out there, and it delivers incredible image quality. I love the design, it's smaller than a lot of these laser projectors that are out there, and it delivers punchy, bright, vivid images, which deliver HDR content really well, but also SDR and gaming is a pleasure. So if you're in the market for a new projector like this, then do check out the link in the description and it will give you a lot more information. Thank you so much for watching this video, my friends, and I look forward to seeing you on the next.